Hello everyone and welcome back to the Motorcycle Rescuer. This is going to be my mid my, my mid week, my mid week build. Um, I won't always release videos mid week guys. I, I normally release less throughout the winter because I do less. Uh, but I'm aware that people have had such a hard year and if my 20 minute videos can help at all or if people want to visit or if people want to service their bikes down here with me and things like that, then I'm always going to help people because um, actually people's uh, mental health and health itself is so much more important than anything else. Uh, so yeah, stay in contact, ask for advice, do feel free to pop down. Um, the best way to contact me is always through the Facebook page, I just, I just get the notifications easier, guys, and then we can chat about how you meet me and where I am. Anyway, this is a 2005 Vespa 50cc with a 50cc engine. Um, apparently, a runner and rider, except one day it went and the engine stayed running, but it wasn't moving. To me, the belt has snapped. Um, I mean, I say that and I've bought a belt, but you just never know these days after yesterday's uh, project over there in the corner. You just never know. Okay, um, I gave this a bit of a sanding down yesterday because I'm going to get some hammer right on this today and uh, make that look a bit nicer. <sighs> Ooh. And then um, if a belt goes on this bike and it starts and it kind of runs and rides and drives and seems fairly normal, then we'll look at the beautifying process over the next couple of days, although I'm filming it today in one day. Um, my main thing, lose this screen, it's, it's, it's wrecked, I wrecked it myself by mistake, putting it into the fan, I had no idea it was that tall. Uh, I felt really silly actually guys, I was being watched, so I ran it up the ramp, got to the top all on my own, and then uh, it went, it, it hit the top and it crumbled and I felt like a right idiot. And then I kind of snapped it on purpose to look like I didn't care, but really I was gutted because they cost a small fortune then. Uh, yeah, let's see if we get this thing up and running and riding. Something's not right at the front. Ah, flat tire, that makes sense. Uh, but that's about it. And then we'll do as much kind of cutting and polishing as we can once we've taken off these stickers. I've borrowed my mum's hair dryer. So, uh, so I'm going to get some power down here and heat this up. Did, did that just happen? Oi! Out! Hey, Sultan, come on, come on, come on, that's it, I'm right mid-flow, dude, you, you really ruined my flow, right, that's it, that way, go on, come on, you don't want to be in there, right, there's no power or anything, okay, um, so to kind of let you know exactly what happens here, you take off the pedal, the kick pedal itself, that holds it on, and then you've got all of these eight mils and they are there'll be a couple tucked under the air box and there'll be some around the other side so you just got to get them all off nice and gentle take your time and then um, a bit of a tap with a mallet or something a bit of a tug and you'll, you'll be pulling that off it should just fall off guys if it doesn't it means there's a hidden bolt somewhere so let's start getting into this I think I'll give this a sand and some black hammer as well because I'll have it out today anyway so, we'll make it look a bit better. Okay guys, this is probably your best angle. Let's see how we get on. Yep, they've not been undone in a long time. You're fine.
Oh, this is a two stroke. Get the big bar out. <coughs> That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Pull out the ones we've loosened. Some of the higher bolts are going to be quite hard to get to on here, it's a bit of a pain, but that's all we got. Okay guys, I'm going to pop off that black panel to give us a little bit more space. I'm going to pull out all of these so we're not wasting all of your time on a Sunday uh, or Tuesday or Thursday. And um, I'll show you what this is, what's like underneath. We're expecting, actually I'll get all the bolts out and we'll take it off together. But I am expecting a, um, a drive belt that's ripped in there. Okay guys, so I believe we've got every bolt out now. Um, and using my years of being screwed over experience, I expect the perfect belt to be in there, brand new and working, and to have a wrecked engine. Uh, that's not true, I'm really not expecting that, I really shouldn't see that. I expect a belt that snaps in here. And if there's not a snap belt in here, I'm taking it back. There we go. Slow and steady wins the race. Oh, that took a while. What, what screw is that? Is it that one? No, it's way too big. Uh, what one was it? Kinda doesn't matter really. There you go, it was that one. Lovely. Uh, this now should be technically loose. Sometimes it needs a love tap. Just get a small hammer out and
the missing whole screw. Yep. We'll edit that out later, guys. Also, I told you they hide. I really do hope there's a snap belt in here, guys. Lovely. Uh, snapped belt. That is um, that is great news. That really is good news. I'm pleased. Look at this nut always. This is the cam. Oh, this is the um, uh, drive shaft nut. Sometimes they get ruined. Actually, people really wreck them. So have a good look at that. We're going to be popping off. I don't know if we can get the. Oh, we're going to have to pop this whole ferriator off. It will make sense. We'll wash out the um, the ferriator anyway, and we'll get it all clean. Now, I think this here is a um, oil pump. I think that's an oil pump. So I think this is a two-stroke engine, which is quite cool. And maybe I was wrong yesterday when I said maybe the ET2 isn't two or four. I don't think it links. I don't know. Um, I think that is a uh, a oil pump though, which is good news because it's good to check them, make sure they're working. Well, I'm going to clean this out a bit with this. Um, best bet is probably some sort of claw hammer on here. I have got the bolt on tool for these Piaggios somewhere, and you bolt it across here and here, and it locks teeth. But uh, in the past, you just wedge something, just wedge something in and, and undo that nut. And that kind of sorts it out. You can pull out this uh, pinion gear to help a little bit as well, just to get it locked. Although, something like that. You just jam it, basically. But you don't want to break it. It is easy to break. You are better off using a, um, a claw hammer, but I can't find mine at the moment. So, next thing to check here is check inside the clutch. Make sure there's nothing left of the old belt. Kind of clean all this out as much as you can. And we need to undo this nut, which is quite tight. And we need to pull the ferriator off in, in a way that we know how it goes back on. It needs to go on like this. So that nut. Block this. Not necessarily in there, but block block this from spinning. Break that nut there. So guys, here's the method I used. Just jam a crowbar in there. Make sure you don't scratch any of the surfaces. I've loosened it now by hand, but... There you go. Right, when you take the ferriator off, if you haven't done it before, pull it back in a specific order. Make sure all the spaces look, you go exactly like that. Keep it all together. Put it on the nut like that. Nice. That's nice and clean. Now you put that on the nut like that. out the space so we'll give it a good polish that's important um, and then we've got the rollers they're going to come out and roll all over the place yeah. and they haven't been changed in a long time guys you can see that take this off <coughs> oh watch out for these um, little clips guys you need them there's two I see two there should be three There's the second. Okay. Uh, 
Great. So we just clean all this up, guys. All of this here, we just clean it all up. Because that's what happens. This is how these systems work. The rollers roll up. They put pressure on the uh, thing and they squash the belt. The belt goes higher. See that flat spot there? It's a big old flat spot. You can turn these around. It's a bit of a flat spot on the other side, so I'm going to position them in the middle. But they all need a good clean. That needs a good clean. This needs a clean. Um, the cleaner it is, the, the nicer it'll work. I can see two. There you go. I can see three of them. You need them as well to keep it straight. Everything else there is fine. Uh, clean and polish the spacer and the runner as well. That's important too. Uh, everything just needs to kind of spin and turn nicely. So clean it all up, guys. Use a bit of WD as well. That won't hurt. Um, some people grease these. Some people don't. Speed fights um, grease them, I believe. Uh, I don't I don't grease them, I leave them dry. These are kind of self-lubricating rollers, so you don't normally need to grease. They've got a weird coating on them. But that's the next step, guys. I'm going to see if I can get the belt in through the back without taking that off. Not that it's a huge issue, it's easier than that. Give all this a good clean-up while we're here. Give all this a good clean-up while we're here. And then chuck it all back together. Make sure when you've put this on and you've put... Um, the actual variator back in that you then put the belt in the middle you have to squash the belt then in between in between this plate here so that it's uh, all ready to go but you also want to make sure you want to put the rear end on first into the clutch guys so get it into the clutch then put it on there and then put it all back together and that should get you rolling uh, cool let me clean all this up and uh, we'll start chucking it back together gently piecing it back up. I'm going to use a little bit of um, thread lock on the, uh, on the end when I put it back together. These are known for coming loose. They have quite a specific torque setting. A bit of thread lock really uh, wouldn't hurt. It's actually a really good idea. Okay guys, so we've got the clutch. Um, I didn't take the clutch off in the end. I just I couldn't get this nut off. What you need to do is you need to block off both the brakes like I've done there and then you need a friend to weight the bike down really and stop it moving and then you can break that loose or a torque gun will I do it but I mean I do have a torque gun behind me but um, it's not the best one so uh, so basically just feed the belt through and then you slip it on exactly like that there that is how it sits and then your, your crunch plate goes in there I want to give it a quick wipe but it goes in like that and then you bolt on the rest like normal that's just the kick starter and the spacers that is your actual general running of the bike there now guys you see so if this fires up which it should at some point then uh, that becomes a normal running riding bike don't forget to put your pillion your kickstart and that's actually your electric start gear in that needs to go in make sure it's clean make sure it's not got crap on it use some brake cleaner on it again and uh, make sure you put the bolts on and we're going to do the reverse process with the crowbar torque it up to a nice spec and I'm going to use some Loctite on it, some uh, thread lock on it, just, just to be sure. We don't want it rattling loose basically. That's how they ruin and then you ruin a whole engine. Some thread lock on there. Make sure this is on the splines. Yep.
Lovely. Um, obviously, there is a specific torque setting for that. I've been doing this for enough years to know that that will be okay. And I used enough thread lock on that. I probably will get my torque wrench out and just double check it anyway. Uh, my torque wrench is a bit old, so I don't know how reliable it is anymore. Anyway, um, I think the key for me here is the thread lock. I've said it three or four times now. Uh, if they come off, they wreck the engine. The whole engine's ruined because they, they ruin the threads on the bolt. So it's probably the most important touch at this stage to do that. Um, for me now, the belt's in. It's fine. Don't worry if it's loose. Sometimes they're tighter when you put them in. Sometimes they're looser. That's just how you've slotted them in in regards to the... Uh, well, because they travel, don't they? So I don't worry too much about that. But if there is an issue when running, then we'll need to look into the belt. Needing to be a bit tighter, but I think that will be fine at this stage. I'm going to throw the housing back on. That's this housing here. Um, I did want to paint it, but... I did want to, um, yeah, paint it. But um, at the moment, I think the priority is check that it's a runner and a rider and then get down to some power source so that we can take off all the crap and start polishing it up a touch. So I'm going to chuck that on only with two or three bolts for now. The rest of the bolts can go into the seat. And then we'll look at kind of the next stages of this project, which is cleaning it up. Any rust patches we see like this one here, we're going to have to um, paint them over, de-rust them. And try and save the bike for longer. There's a rust patch right there as well. Look. So cool, let me throw this casing back on and see if this thing starts and runs and rides. That'll be interesting. So I've chucked the battery in, guys. I don't think it's a good battery. Um, my charger said that it was charged immediately, a few minutes after putting it on, which isn't a good sign. But this is the stage where we see if the battery's okay and if this thing starts at all. I guess the... Uh Sounds too strokey, guys. That's quite cool. Nice. Low beam, high beam. Uh, I think we've already checked all the indicators, haven't we? Yeah, horn. Wow, nice loud beam. Um, idle seems, oh it seems alright, it's lying down. I don't know how long it's been sitting guys, so a bit of blue smoke. There's probably a bit of oil in there. I may touch, in fact I am. I'm going to chuck a cap full in the petrol just in case, um, just to help it. And normally smoke like that means there is plenty of oil in there, probably too much. But for what's left of the fuel in there, a tiny bit more, just gives me peace of mind. And then when you run the next bit of fuel through, it will go back to normal. Um, also, you can check the, that the oil is spouting out on the carb by taking it off and running it for a few seconds with the oil in the um, fuel. And uh, just check that it is pushing two-stroke out. And, of course, check that there is two-stroke in there. I mean... Let's, uh, I don't know where the two-stroke reservoir is on this, actually. Well, there you go. That's uh, easy enough, isn't it? Um, and I can see, I can see some in there, so I will top that up as well. So a tiny touch in, in the fuel that's in there, just in case. And uh, fill that up so that we're all good to go for the near future. And then I'll take it for a quick spin after a few minutes of warming up. So guys, it's definitely good top quality two-stroke oil in there now and there's a touch in the fuel, so I'm not too worried about it. I am gonna let it sit for a few minutes before taking it out. I may just unbolt the, uh, the screen at this stage while I'm, uh, while I'm letting it kind of warm up and sort itself out. Uh, and then I'll, I'll go for a quick spin. I do have my head cam here somewhere, so uh, we may be able to capture that journey on the old head cam. Uh, thank you to John Stone, actually, guys, who gave that to me. Um, and it's brilliant, I love seeing the rides. Right, what have I done? Why are you dropping? There you go. Right, let me just unbolt this thing.
had to say uh, the uh, mobile phone holder guys they're meant to be there um, also you can put newspaper here in the winter to protect your face they're, um, they are part of the original design cool uh, it's a bit less smoky now is it Connor? oh I love two strokes nice sound that I'm going to take it for a spin in a minute and then I'm going to get it down to the hairdryer and we'll try and peel off some of these stickers then I'll bring it back and we'll look at um, some touching up of the paintwork guys but let's see how this runs, we might be really prim premature here 